are back, guys. So, guys, this is Paulo Neto. Uh, he is one of my bosses at the soccer club that I work at, at West Florida Flames, which is a bunch of you play soccer there. Some of you play competitive, some of you play recreational, and uh, those of you that don't play soccer, that's okay too. <laughs> but anyway, he is... Uh, he and I work together, uh, and his job is technical director at our uh, at our club, which means what does it mean, Paulo? What is your what does it mean that you're the technical well, director? I mean, for uh, uh, for the sake of you know uh, making it really simple, uh, I see myself as the coach of the coaches. So uh, the idea is you get every every coach on the same page, uh, doing activities that are you know uh, they have a similar goal to you know. To, to make the, the kids better and make them enjoy what they're doing there. So uh, without taking the, 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 the coaches' own personalities, because uh, we want the coaches to express themselves, uh, but we want everybody, you know, under the same mission. So, I, again, technical director will be like one of the things, a coach of coaches. So That's brilliant. That's a great way of explaining it. I've heard you say that before. I should have I should have remembered that myself. So Paulo is from Brazil. And uh, he's got an interesting uh, winding journey that's led him to this place that he's at right now with us. So, Paulo, first, if you could tell the kids about yourself, what, what, tell us about your life, your life story. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, as Jim mentioned, I'm, I'm, I'm from Brazil, uh, born and raised um, in a family of, uh, big family, uh, uh, 12, uh, 12 kids. So I'm one of 12. Wow. Uh, but, uh, you know, like a, a great, great uh, Christian family. And, uh, you know, the, the one of the passions that we had was like uh, like many in my country, the passion for, for soccer, football. So uh, since uh, early ages, and of course, going to school and everything, I've always had this, this dream to, you know, uh, to become a soccer player. So I, so I, I, I did well there, you know, growing up and... Um, going to school again, but the playing, playing soccer. And I, I, I was very fortunate to play on a very high level. Uh, I played for some of the, the, the top teams in Brazil, the youth system of the, the top teams in Brazil. And I was even pre-selected for, for the national team in my journey. And, you know, um, and wow. then got really close to, uh, uh, to professional soccer. And, um, and at that time, I had an opportunity to to come here to the United States uh, for uh, on a soccer scholarship because of my abilities and and it was a difficult decision to continue to play soccer or, or to come here and continue to play soccer here while always pursuing like a a, a degree uh, and, and and giving you know like uh, what what was important for, for me and for my family the. the the values that I had, you know, growing up, uh, made the decision to come to to U.S. Uh, that was 20 years ago, uh, a little over 20 years ago, um, 1999. Um, and then, you know, play play college soccer here for four years. Uh, play uh, a little bit of professional soccer after four years. Uh, but even, you know, like in college, I, I already uh, my junior year in college, I started thinking about well, I can. I can make a career of coaching, um, especially in, in college soccer. It was something that was really unique for me because that, that's, a, that's a unique system. Um, no other co country in the world has what the U.S. has in terms of uh, athletics, uh, university. And, um, and that was something that I, it really kept my, my attention, my imagination. And, and then as soon as I, I graduated, I started you know, uh, thinking about that, looking for opportunities to do it. And, and even even though I was playing, I was already looking for an opportunity to get involved into coaching. And that happened pretty quickly. I had an opportunity to become an assistant coach and to pursue a master's degree. And that's what I did. And then after that, it went really, really quickly. You know, I, I was an assistant coach in college for two years, then graduated, got my first head, uh, head coaching job. And then, you know, made a career out of it. Made like a coach college soccer for almost 15 years. And then, uh, and that, that took me, you know, that, that, that was a great experience because I traveled all over the country playing and, and changed jobs a few times, going up the ladder in terms of my, you know, coaching positions that I had. I started in a very small school, uh, a league called NAI, which is a league for small private schools, and then uh, moved to uh, NCAA Division Two, and then NCAA Division One as a head coach. So it was, it was a 
was a nice journey. And then after uh, you know 15 years, I started feeling that you know for for the sake of my family or all, all, all the traveling, I needed to 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 do something that would allow me to travel less, if you will. And and then I started getting involved with uh, you know coaching education and. Um, and you know, coaching, say coaching administration, but it's not. I don't think it's the best. Well, it's more like coaching management. And then I took a position with the um, the, the West Pennsylvania Youth Soccer Association as the technical director. And uh, one of the jobs in the, the, as a technical director in the state association is to be in charge of the ODP, the Olympic Development Pro- Program, which I've been involved for you know 13 years now. So it was a very good match. One thing led to the other, really. And then I did that for, for two and a half years and then finally had the opportunity to, to come here to uh, West Florida Flames in the same position. And I've been here since last last uh, May, uh, April. So it's, it, and, and I'm really enjoying it. You know, these are challenging times, but uh, it's great to be here. So uh, uh, I'm looking forward for the, for the next few years uh, doing this. So I hope, I hope that was, uh, I was try to, to concise my, my uh, life journey like uh and how soccer it, it plays a, a key role in that no we love stories and that, that's a great story i have a few questions i wrote down while you were talking sure. uh first when you came to the united states first of all how you have 12 kids in your family where are you in that 12 are you old i'm number one you're the oldest i'm the oldest that yeah. is so interesting so you've got a lot of siblings still back in brazil all of them so that, that was that was one of big family. Then I, you know, like uh, I had one of the great greatest things that I accomplished. And, and you know, when you feel like I feel like a lot of uh, uh, sons and daughters feels you know, uh, a strong sense of gratitude towards your parents. And 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 if you if you can't give back, this is something that you want to do. And, and for me, a way of giving back was. Uh, I brought two of my brothers here to stay to play college soccer for me. Oh, that's so that was great. a great experience. I, I, I coach. I got to coach them. You know, my younger brothers. Wow! How did that so, work out? Did that work out good? That that, that went out well. I had had small issues. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> like when you coach your kid, there's always something like yes, that. It's yes. not the coaching your brothers, not coaching your, your sure. son. But, but still, there's some similarities. You know, that's awesome. But it was great. It was great, great times. You know, two different schools. You know. And uh, so they lived here. They they, 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 they they graduated, and they end up going back to Brazil. And now they, they do really well working. I had another brother that was uh, the the worked for a bank in New York City, and he worked almost ten years there. And he was transferred to Brazil two years ago, uh, in the same bank, and, and um, he has one more year. I think his contract expiring in December, and he. He, he's, I think he's gonna come back here to U.S. So, oh, that's interesting. so then, I'll, so but, but for now, I'm I'm alone here. All my <laughs> the other eleven in Brazil. <laughs> oh wow! So, uh, do you now your 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 first language is Portuguese? Portuguese, yes. And 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 was it hard for you to learn English? How how talk about that? Well, actually, it was funny because yesterday I was talking to a Brazilian friend about that. that for me, it was one of the hardest things that I've done in life because. I had like a very very basic um, understanding and uh, of English, you know. When I came uh, when I came in nineteen ninety nine, I started college in uh, in the fall, but I came to to US in January of that year uh, to do like a three month course, like uh, English as second language. So uh, and then I you know and then I played through the summer one of the semi professional leagues. So that was. That really helped me to, you know, to to quickly advance, you know, like in the English language to the point that I was ready for the fall. But to, I mean, I you know, I was not fluent, but I was I was really good with grammar. Always been really good, and uh, and I was really <clears throat> a good student, applying myself and everything. So so because of my my grammar skills and uh, you know, uh, even though I was not a hundred percent communicating, but. Uh, I could read and write, and, mm-hmm. and, and so and I'm not bragging about it. But even in, I was a tutor for 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 English in, in, in 
college. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> just because I could, you know, I could write properly and grade. And <laughs> because you learn. So, so. <laughs> isn't it true? <laughs> that's that a funny thing. When you learn a foreign language, that's what you learn. You learn the, the grammar. You learn the basics. Maybe even That's, that's the better. foundation. That's the foundation. Yes. So I think that's one of the most effective ways to learn. Because a lot of people can learn through the streets and everything. And, and, and that's great. And some people, you know, learning language, is, it's a skill, you know, like that you need to have some kind of aptitude. It's not a, like like when you play sports, right? Aptitude, the, 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 the God-given talent plays a role, important role. I, I believe that language is similar. There's some people that just like, they, they have a way for it. I, I'm not one of them. So for me, it was really hard. Wow. Wow. So another question that I wanted to ask you, were you scared when you first came to the U.S.? That must have been an, a, a, a not, that must have been a, a challenge for you at least a little bit, I'm thinking. I'm, yeah, it, it was in a way, but uh, my, my, my father was an uh, exchange student here in, oh, in okay. senior in high school. So that was back in 1969. My, my, my dad was like an exchange student in a very small town called Belmont uh, in Iowa. Okay. So, like, uh, so, and then he came here a couple other times for his work and everything. So, I, I, even though I, I, it was my first time here, uh, but I, you know, it was something I was looking forward to do because of, you know, uh, the great experience that, that my, my father had. So, uh, yes, so I, I was scared in a way. It's always challenging when you don't speak the language, right? I mean, you're always scared to, how are you going to communicate? How are you going to get, what if you get lost and, and right. things of that nature? But uh, something that, you know, I can, you, you, you overcome. I mean, the desire to, to do well and, 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 and to learn new things and, 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 and you know, and, 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 and find different opportunities that, that was stronger than the, <clears throat> the fear. That's cool. Now, uh, your uh, last thing I, I wrote down, and then we'll go to the next question that I wanted to ask you. What were some of the names of the teams back in Brazil that you were that you were with? I played for the for the big teams. I played for Corinthians, which is one of the top mm -hmm. clubs in, in the country. I played there for from uh, almost seven years. I, I was wow. I started there as a U thirteen player, U thirteen or fourteen, and I played until the second team. So and I trained with the pros for for many many times, you know. Oh. So so it was a pretty much a lifetime there. And then after that, I played for um, for a club in uh, in my hometown. Called, it's called São Bento, it's Sorocaba. Sorocaba, that's the name of my town. And that club, you know, like that club had you know has has journey from you know a first division to fourth division, you know. So it's a club that you know, it's a small club, so they move up and down, you know. So uh, people here were all familiar with the concept of promotion and relegation, so that happens all the time. So I went to this club, it was in my hometown, and even though I was amateur, I got to play with the professionals there for many, many occasions. And then I was on a loan to a big club in, in Rio called Fluminense. So oh. I, I was there on a loan for one year. Wow. That's big. And then came back and played a couple more years for, for the same club. So you played in the famous... La Flu. Uh, played La Flu. Yeah. I played in Maracanã, which is, a, you know, the, the mecca of soccer wow. right, in, in Brazil. So, yeah, so had had a few That's very cool. cool experiences. Okay, kids, when we get back to school, I will explain to you promotion relegation, uh, loaning, and Fla Flu. I'll, I'll explain all that stuff <laughs> out to you. But we're gonna... Those are good, you know, good, good concepts, yeah. Yes, for sure. So... We're, we're talking now, the kids who are listening to this are 9, 10, 11 years old. What were you like when you were that age? What kind of a kid were you? I was like, uh, the, I mean, I was passionate about uh, sports in general. Of course, soccer was my thing, but I mean, I, anything that, that you know, required like movement and, and, and running around really captured my, my, my interest, you know, and my, my imagination. Uh, I was, uh, I, I would say that, you know, like, I was... I'm, I'm looking for the best word. I, I was not shy per se, introverted mm -hmm. in a way, you know, but very, you know, uh, whenever, whenever I was among, among my friends, I was, you know, very extroverted. So, sure. uh, but very, you know, like uh, uh, interested in, in, in new things, you know, and, uh, and spending time outside, a lot of time outside. 
you know, like riding the bike or just, mm-hmm. you know, playing the streets. I mean, it's, which is something, it's a, it's a different concept. I live in a subdivision and, uh, and it's funny, from time to time my kids go to the street and actually play some soccer or juggling or and, and, and they ride the bike and everything, which remind me of, of my, my, my childhood a little bit. Mm-hmm. But this is a it's kind of a condominium, right? Which, you know, like here in Florida, we have tons of those. I think most of people use some kind of, live in some kind of, for us, it was really the street. We have neighbors to neighbors to neighbors. Like pretty much like you know, when, when you go to, to to a big city downtown, you know. So yes. Uh, so, but outside all the time. That's something that that's how life was back then. You know, spending a lot of time in, in the streets or outside playing with your friends, climbing trees, you know, jumping fences and things of that nature. Uh, uh, which is it's it's different than, than now for sure. That's that's cool. That's really cool. Well. So when you were at school, did you have PE class? And what do you remember about it? I, that, that, I had such great memories from, from PE. And I, um, you know, when, when you send me the, uh, some of the questions that we're going to be talking about, uh, I love to see that, you know, uh, opportunity to talk about PE. Because I mean, some, of the, some of my best memories, I remember my PE teachers, you know, by name. You know, like uh, uh, some of them had such a, you know, like an important, you know, influence in my life. So PE was was a centered part of the curriculum. I, I feel like you know when when I look back, uh, and remember doing PE um, at least twice a week. It was part part of the curriculum, you know, and uh, and I remember you know like uh, the the things that we used to do in PE. Um, I remember PE was divided in four blocks during the year. Uh, and the four blocks were, for most of the time, I'm, I'm remembering, you know, like mo- even when I moved from school to school, I think that was somewhat consistent in that way. Uh, and of course, the level of uh, uh, the, 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 the level of the exercises and, and the expectations from, 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 from the teachers were different depending on the age group. As, as you get older, it, it was a little bit harder and so on. But I remember doing, you know, um, um, Olympic sports as in one quarter. It was four different quarters where we were jumping and you know like uh, uh, track and field. I mean, that was the first uh, first unit. This, I, I not don't necessarily in this order. I don't remember the order, okay. but those I'm gonna talk about the four. So that sure. uh, track and field and Olympic sports was one. The other one was volleyball. The uh, the third one was basketball. And uh, and the fourth one was handball, so those are the those those are the four. We never did soccer. You That's know, so that, interesting. <laughs> that was something that How we you... would do like any opportunity we could, you know, and every break, <laughs> recess, and everything. So I felt like the teachers are like, yeah, you you learn that on your own. <laughs> but wow. then, but the other four, it was it was uh, it was pretty consistent. It's something that I mean we look forward to do. You know, it was. Uh, I had a great time, and I felt like it was such important for things like in our days we work with soccer, and a lot of times what our kids lack is uh, is coordination. I mean, yes. coordination it's a it's a huge thing, yes. especially for this age group, You're talking eight, nine, ten. I mean, that that the, we talk about foundation, you know, in another conversation that we had here, right? That's the foundation. If you don't have the coordination, how to move, you know, and and, and being coordinated. You know how you do it, how to run, how to change directions, how to jump. It seems like such a simple thing, but yes. but has such a, a, a like a lasting effect in, in your life in everything that you do. So I felt like I thank my 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 uh, PE teachers, you know, like f- for that because they in, in every you know especially we started with uh, track and field. It was the first unit, and a lot of that it was like learning the proper way to to run. You know, to mm-hmm. to accelerate, to accelerate, to jump, to land, to change directions, and so on. And I felt like, you know, at first we didn't like it, but after time, it it was such an important thing, you know, for you for you to become what 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 you wanted to become. And regardless, even if you didn't go for it, I I was fortunate to my 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 journey took me to sports. So for me, it was even more important. But for everybody else, it, being coordinated, it's important. And, yes. And and, and so it, it, I had. I had uh, great memories, uh, Jim, from, from 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 those days. It's a it's a big part of uh, 
you know, and a affirming yourself, uh, th that physical affirmation, the way you feel uh, when you when you can perform even a basic uh, even a basic movement, it gives you a feeling. It's very hard to we're we're struggling to find words to 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 put words to it, but it is important, and it's hard to test it. You can you can test how fast you run or how far you run, but it's hard to test the importance of that feeling that you draw inside from your own confidence, your own your own belief in yourself. I mean, how do you test that? You really can't. There's, right. no, there's yeah. no way, but it's real, but we know it it's is. real. And at PE is where it happens, a lot of it. Uh, so I, I think that's great. I think it's, uh, we do a, a lot of the stuff that you just talked about in our PE. Um, actually, what I sent you, the clip that I sent you uh, is about the way we warm up. So the way, when we have PE class, we'll have a 45 minute PE class, but every class begins with a warm up. Right. So then the question is, what are you going to do for that warm up? That that becomes the, 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 the challenge. And if you you can do the standard warm up or you can do something different with that little time period of 10 minutes or five minutes, whatever. it is. So what we've chosen to do is we've chosen to turn that time period into something different. And that's where we've introduced the music and that's where we've introduced the themes. And so we'll have a theme every year. And uh, and then and then routines to songs that tell the story of the theme. When you put the songs together, they tell the story of the theme. And then and then uh, we do that every day. So the kids do those routines. You know, they don't do them all. Maybe two or three every day. But yeah. by the end of the year, they've learned them all pretty good. And then at the end of the year, we invite the parents to come and see the whole thing. Now you've seen it. What is your impression? of the way that this whole music thing looks and what do you what do you think about it i think it's a, you know music and, and sports are two different things but i think there's a lot of uh integration between them and they, they go well together um and um every opportunity you have to do that i think uh it, it, it improves the experience i think uh you know like one thing you talk about warm-ups you know uh, warm-ups are extremely important, you know, for any sport that you play. But warm-ups have a way to be sometimes, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like repetitive. Yes. And, and then and when it, it is repetitive, then it, it may become boring for some, yes. you know. Yes. I remember, so introducing music with, with uh, you know, combining music with warm-up, for me, is such a great concept because... It's something that you know Dan most will look forward to do. So, uh, so he, I think he, he stimulates the, 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 the person to you know look forward to, to do that, and uh, and he makes it more fun. And every time you, you have fun doing something, then then you know you have a better experience. And if you have a better experience, you want to to come back and yes. do more. So so it absolutely affects uh, uh, the participation, and and, and and you know it's something then. You know, little things like that, Jim. Whenever you 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 can create this this process that I'm describing, right? Then you increase also the maybe the, you create some kind of passion for that. You know, like something that you know lifelong you know sports or, or physical activities fans. That that's why you're creating. You know, and, and something that is going to impact kids for the rest of their life. So I think that's a really unique thing that uh, that can be done. I know you do that with soccer as well, and. Uh, mm -hmm. I know we have great results in terms of uh, the enjoyment and, and participation. So uh, it's uh, it's great to see. You know, like I was I was really impressed at uh, at the routines and uh, and and really you know caught my eye how much fun the kids were having. And that, that's 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 the that's the key. Isn't that it? that says a lot. Uh, that says a lot to have that to be having that fun because you like you said, it then becomes the connection to enjoying it wanting to do more and it just all builds on itself and can't wait to get there the next time actually interestingly when we have pe class um we'll have four to five different cl uh, classes of 20 kids come at the same time so we'll have maybe 100 kids out there for for a general pe class we have a, a team of five people and what we do paulo is we as soon as the first class arrives we start the warm-up 
So we don't wait till the last class arrives. We, we're not That's just great. sitting around waiting. The, the minute the first class arrives, boom, the music comes on. So as each of the subsequent classes is arriving, the music's already going. So and they're just enjoying the fun. Yeah. They've got to hurry to the party or they're going to miss yeah. it. And, yeah, that's, and, that's uh, good. And so then, you know, and then uh, and then it's like, yeah, you, you know, if we start the warm-up early, isn't that person going to miss an important part? You can make that argument, but I think the idea of building the excitement and the desire to be there overcomes the 30 seconds or a minute that they missed at the sure. very beginning. And not all and not all classes always arrive first. You know, yeah. some days your teacher gets you out there early. Some days your teacher is a little slow to get you out there. So, so it all kind of builds on itself. And then, uh, and then we'll we have that theme, uh, whatever it is. This year our theme was one I know that you'll uh, that you'll like uh, because it goes along with the way you play soccer in Brazil. It's not just the bricks; it's the mortar. That's our theme for the year. The mortar is what holds the bricks together. And so if you focus on the mortar, the, the mortar is the feeling of safety, the feeling of connection, uh, that, uh, that if you don't have good mortar, the bricks don't hold together, the wall falls down, but good mortar makes the wall strong. So this becomes our theme for the whole year. Everything we do is about that simple idea. And... Uh, and then you know we we move on, and every year we have a new theme, a big a yes. big picture idea like that, and uh, so the kids get it. We teach them, we explain to them. This is why this song is here. This is why that song is here. And the lyrics of the songs tell the story reflected of the, the theme. The, of yeah. The, the, the theme, yeah. Yeah, and then and then the and then you know the other thing is that all the kids that 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 were out there, they're. A, a full array of some athletes, some not so athletic, but everybody's everybody participates because it's something that pulls people in, and and uh, and I really appreciate your feedback uh, because you're the first person, uh, Paulo, from South America that we've done one of these interviews with, and we've done some interviews with people from different parts of the world, uh, but I've always wanted to get a, a person with a voice. From South America, that can that can look at this, and look at and give our kids feedback, like you've done. I'm grateful yeah. for that. Uh, do no, you... I think you mentioned something there that is really key. You know, in PE, is that you pay, it, it's you know it's for athletic kids and non-athletic kids, and and that's the thing that you know again the it's for everyone, and 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 it's such a, uh, a key I think skill set. You know, uh, uh, we talk about you know not not a sport per se, but the whole you know the the athleticism and, and coordination and, and, and something that everybody can, can benefit from in their lives at some point, you know, much like, and that's why we, we, we learn the language, right? Ling, English and, and math, and there's some basic skills that we need to have, don't know if we're going to make a living and, you know, for working with those things, but but still important in our in our build up as, as a person, and I feel like P is the same, so uh, that, that, I'm glad to hear, you know, the, the, the experiences that these kids are having. Well, you, you've kind of answered my next question just now before I asked it, because what I was going to ask you is, what do you think PE should be about? And it's kind of, I think you just answered it, didn't you? Yeah, that, 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 that's for me. It's a, it's a, PE is like, a, it, it, it's, a, it's a subject that, uh, it's a life skill subject that, that uh, every kid should have an opportunity to develop whether or not they're gonna you know again some will, will, will make more use of it you know like will be essential you know for for whatever they do in life you know some will just be something that you know it's important you have you know that you have an idea you 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 you, you acquire skills that you're gonna you're gonna use even if, you, if you're not gonna be you know like in the athletic field you know like often but still you know something that you can benefit from so it should be inclusive uh, it should be uh, hopefully fun whenever you make it fun then I think it improves the the, 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 the experience and the participation and uh, but I, I feel really strong about PE and, and should, for me it should be you know I, I know that it seems like it changes from state to state or even district to district in terms of uh, when when it becomes mandatory when, when it's not but for me something you should have throughout your 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 life in school, you know, but maybe, you know, it's more emphasized 
at, at certain point of your life and then less emphasize in others you know but I think it's something that it should it should be permanent you know through the whole through the whole course of uh, you know education I could not agree more